Shannon, what is the biggest reason the Bucks won? Well, the big two for the uh, Milwaukee Bucks showed up and they showed out, Skip. Chris Middleton was sensational. Giannis was was great also. Skip, when I look at Chris Middleton, 38, 10, and 5 with five, with, with five steals, played the first two. The first two games, Skip, that was the reason why they lost. I mean, that's why they were blown out. That's not the reason they lost. But you can't shoot 6 of 23. You can't shoot as bad as he was shooting and expect the whole suit, especially when Kyrie was there and James Harden wasn't. But if you look since game two, game three and beyond, Chris Middleton has been sensational. He's played very, very well. Skip Giannis, 11 of 15 in the lane, only took five shots outside of the paint with no threes, 13 shot at the rim, Eight fouls drawn. That's the way they need to play. Skip, I'm watching the game last night. They are so frustrating. Skip, Giannis comes down. He lays the ball up twice. And then his next possession, he shoots an 18-footer. Holiday can get at the rim at will. He's shooting step back, off balance threes. I'm like, why are y'all doing this? Do you understand? Brooklyn has no rim protection. They have no one that can stop you from getting to where you want to be. And you're bailing them out. You're keeping them in this game. I just kept waiting for the game to be over at half skip because they could get to the rim at will. But so for some reason, they want to show, well, you know, this is what we did in the regular season. This is who we are. But when you have a situation, you're so much longer and taller. You're more athletic than the team that you're playing against. Take advantage of that. Get to the rim. Skip, Holiday, he was just driving me nuts last night, Skip. I'm watching him handle the ball. And in two possessions, Skip, he laid it up with his left hand off the glass. And in the next possession, he'll come back and shoot a step back three. Skip, he's one for 10, and he keeps shooting like he's Steph or Dame. I'm like, Holiday. Just go to the basket. You got Joe Harris on you, or you got James Harden on you, who has a bum leg, and he's doing everything he possibly can, Skip, not to do anything sudden. You notice he's not going to the paint. James is just shooting threes because he don't want to do anything that would uh, uh, aggravate or irritate that hamstring. But I thought they also did a, uh, they did a better job of trying not to let KD play one-on-one, but they still, I believe, let him play one-on-one more than they should have. But I thought, Skip, the 48 total minutes that he played in the first, the, uh, the previous game, Skip, and he played, what, the first 20 minutes of this game before he got a break. It seems like he didn't have the legs because he went from shooting. Let me make sure I get this right, Skip. He went from shooting, what, 17, 18 free throws to only shooting two. So that tells me he didn't have the legs that he had the previous day. So now you can come with neutralizer because... We're talking about like Kevin Durant played bad. He was still 50% and had 32 11, Skip. That just goes to show you the <laughs> level of greatness that he is. But I thought the Bucks, the Bucks, big two, Middleton and Giannis, they got help from Holiday. When your big three scores 89 of your 104 points, Skip, you're doing pretty good. Okay, I'm assuming you're finished, <clears throat> which means it's my turn because I have a whole lot to say about what I unfortunately had to watch last night. Let's start with the fact that, as you say, thanks to Holiday, it was no <laughs> holiday last night for <laughs> my Nets. But the point was, he did go one of ten from three last night. And the point was, your team that won you three cases of due went seven of 33 from three last night. That's 21%. They left the door wide open for the Nets to do what the Nets keep doing to them, which is to come back and snatch another one on the road. Correct. So what happened with 841 left in the basketball game last night in Milwaukee, Joe Harris, who's been in the worst <laughs> slump of his career shooting threes, a guy who has won the three-point shootout on All-Star Weekend, the guy who led the league in three-point percentage shooting this year. Joe Harris finally made his first three of the night. He wound up one of four, but he finally made one. If we could see this. Joe Harris, it went in, and he runs back up the court yelling, I can do this. I got this, like out of his mind, like he lost his mind. And suddenly, if we could see, here's the shot. And then could we see what then ensued at the other end? Joe <laughs> Harris went completely over the edge, and here comes your man, Chris Middleton, down. Here we are. And he says, I'm going to block his three-point shot. And he just grabbed his arm as he went up to shoot it. It was a horrendous foul. And Steve Nash thought about challenging it. And Joe Harris ran over and said, no, no, I, I got him. 
And what did Chris Middleton do as he is wont to do on nights at home? <laughs> he went and made all three free throws. And what did your fear the deers do from that point forward? They Blow went the ballistic open. on the nets. <laughs> they went on a 14 to nothing run off that sequence we just saw. And Kevin Durant took one three in that sequence and missed it. And he finally stopped the bleeding with one last dunk. And that was the only two points he scored over the last 841 of this basketball game that was begging to be won. And by the way, I forgot to throw in the fact that that three cut it to five. So right. at 841 left, it was a five point game. And Shannon Sharp had given me five and a half points. So <laughs> with did. 841 left, I actually led the basketball game. I was a half point ahead. And I then was it that <laughs> happened. Yeah, I was, it's funny that you say that because that's what I was thinking at the exact same thing at the exact same time. I'm like, damn, I'm a half a point behind now. <laughs> You're a half a point behind. So to your point, Kevin Durant hit the wall. He finally just ran out of gas. He obviously played a full 48 two nights ago, and he was playing extremely high minutes up to the 841 mark last night, and he just hit the physical wall. He lost his legs. He just ran out of gas. And for, for those who don't follow these kinds of second-level stats, I checked on it this morning because my eye test told me I have never, ever seen Kevin Durant handle the basketball more than he did last night. Obviously, coming off his career-best game, he finally decided, I think I have to do this all by myself. Would you believe the ball was in his hands last night? 45% of the night. Remember, Luka led the NBA this year in usage rate at 43%. So Kevin had by far the highest usage rate of any playoff game he's ever played because Shannon, as we always talk about, he's the most efficient scorer ever. Correct. He doesn't need to take many shots. He'll he catch and shoot a lot of shots. He'll yes. get them. He, he doesn't have to dribble, 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 dribble. But right. last night, he had to turn into James Harden <clears throat> because – there was no James Harden to be found. What I was dumbstruck over, I was thunderstruck over, I was gobsmacked about was the reason I made that bet with you about last night and game seven was because I thought that James Harden coming off playing 46 minutes on that balky hamstring would be 50% quicker last night. He went the other way. He was more <laughs> statuesque last night. He was more of a cardboard cutout last night than he was two nights before. I could not believe it. He became a supreme liability on offense as their playmaker and creator and obviously on defense where he couldn't. He just tries to hide in the middle of the lane. Right. He did have four steals because he's a genius with the basketball, but it has to be right before him where he can get his hand on the basketball. Right. Otherwise, he is protect, protect, protect the hamstring. And Shannon, I got to tell you, he was such a liability on offense that I believe there's only one coach who would have kept him in the game, and that is Steve Nash, who obviously played at a high level, back-to-back two-time MVP. and. Right. He was just doing it for the psyche of the team, just for right. the spirit of the team. Let's just right. keep him out there in presence only. Right. I couldn't believe how little James Harden was able to do last night. And would you believe he had the ball in his hands 18%. That's by far the lowest he's ever had. He's led the league in usage rate twice in the 40s. But mm -hmm. that's the, the, the lowest he's had since his days as the sixth man of the Oklahoma City Thunder back with Kevin and Russ back in their right. OKC yeah. days. So right. the point is, Kevin had the ball 45% in his hands. James had the ball 18% in his hands because he didn't want the ball in his hands. He could not create. He could not beat anybody off the dribble. He threatened no. nobody. And the irony was he did make three three-point shots and – Shannon, if you watch them closely, it's like he had to heave them. It's, it's like he was shot putting them. He was throwing them because apparently he doesn't even trust his hamstring to push off and shoot right. a, a set shot, you know, a feet on the floor set right. shot, right. step back three. Well, how did that happen? Where he went the other way. So to me, 
I'm not surprised Kevin took them as far as he could take them last night. And now I get to lack of help. Obviously, Joe Harris was one of four from three. But right. remember, Jeff Green, 48 hours before, had scored 27 points on eight right. of 11 from the floor and seven of eight threes. Last right. night, Jeff Green went two of nine and one of four from three. Blake went one of four from three, and Blake had right. made three of six back in game five. Correct. So all of a sudden, you've got three starters going one of four from three. Well, well, that won't work. And obviously, Joe Harris is the odd man out because he's going to get open looks if he really wants them. Right. To me, Shannon, Joe Harris found the stage too big for him. Yeah. He looks scared to me. And once a couple don't go in, he really started to pull that string and he was short. You know, he wasn't following through. It, right. it got ugly. It got scary bad for Joe Harris. So when you when the role player, I know the biggest, oldest cliche in the NBA playoffs is, is role players don't play well on the road. They only play at home. Well, this was about as classic as, as, as well, Joe, no role players as you'll ever see. Well, well, Skip, Joe Harris hadn't played well at home either. And it's, you know this, Skip, as the rounds advance, the stage gets even larger. And so that's what we're starting to see. Plus, you don't have Kyrie. You don't have James Harden that's operating at his apex. So the wide open, wide open looks that he was getting against Boston, he isn't there. Also, Skip, since James Harden is a little hampered, they can switch one through four with him. If they can switch Giannis on him, they can switch P.J. Tucker, they can switch Middleton, they can switch Holiday. So it's not like he has an advantage, especially since he's somewhat limited with that hamstring. What they need is, Skip, even though uh, Kevin Durant had a game for the ages, a historic game, a transcendent game, one of the best games that you've seen in the last 20 years. Yep. Without Jeff Green doing what he does, they don't win that game. Without Blake Griffin doing what he does, yep. they don't win that game. So now you get Kevin Durant. He still gave you 32 and 11 on 50% shooting, but you got nothing else from no one else. Even though James Harden gave you 10 more points than what he gave you the previous game, you look at Jeff Green. He gave you what, 19, 20 points less than what he gave you? What about Blake? He gave you 10, 12 less than what he gave you? That was the difference in the ball game. Kevin Durant also skipped. This is why I know he was tired. He had seven turnovers. Yeah. James Harden had four. So 11 of the 16 turnovers that they had, the two primary ball handlers turned it over the most. So that's when I know fatigue was starting to set in because I look at Kevin, uh, KD, and KD was a little careless with the basketball when, the for, as you mentioned, 48 hours earlier, he was sensational. He could do no wrong. But that was my only concern with Kevin Durant. I know he's, he's going to be efficient. But could he put together another game like he had? I'm not saying, Skip, it's very rarely. I don't know if we've ever seen guys have historic games back-to-back. -back. Now, if we want to go back and, and nitpick, says, okay, look at LeBron, what he did uh, in the 2016 game five, 41, 16, and eight, and then he turns around 41, 11, and not seven. But for Kevin Durant to, to ask KD to go, okay, KD, we need a, a 49, 17, or how about a 45, 14, and 10 ball game again? Skip, the role players are going to have to, especially with James being Nick, I'm worried about KD. Would I be surprised if KD gave you 40 and 10 on Saturday? Absolutely not. But I don't believe that will be enough unless he gets a major contribution from Jeff Green or Blake Griffin. Now, James Harden, Skip, for me, now, he did play better. I thought he played better offensively than what he played. He was a little less hesitant. The shots didn't quite go in for James Harden. But, Skip, we know James Harden doesn't really like to play defense anyway. So to say that he's a liability on defense is really not saying much. But I thought Holiday did a better job of trying to attack him. I thought they did a better job of trying to attack him on the deep, on the uh, on the offensive end and not let him rest. Kevin KD was still resting because PJ Tucker just hides out in the corner. But let's give Milwaukee. Let's not just focus on what the uh, uh, Nets didn't do. Middleton and Giannis were sensational. Giannis was spectacular because he's driving the ball. If I'm Giannis, Skip, I'm going into game seven. I'm not shooting anything outside of 10 feet. Chris Middleton with this and Holiday, bruh, you got an advantage over Harden, who can't move, Joe Harris, whose skill, whose talent and skill set is not comparable to yours. You have a decided advantage. Why would you attempt that many threes, Skip? Why? 
Don't need it. Brooke Lo I, I, I've given up with Brooke, uh, uh, Rob, uh, Brooke Lopez, Skip. He's going to be seven foot one, and he's just going to jack up threes no matter who's on him. Whether it's Mike James, Joe Harris, uh, it does not matter who's guarding him. He's not going down in the paint to shoot the ball, to, to, to post up. So I, I've given up that. But the two superstars, and Holiday played sensational last night, and it was asking a talk, it was asking an awful lot for KD to come back and give you another one of those performances. And even if he had, without one of these other guys coming along with him, it still wasn't going to be enough to offset what the big three for the Brooklyn of uh, Brooklyn Nets, what the Bucks did last night. So in the end, the Brooklyn Nets should be ashamed of themselves <laughs> for losing by 15 in a closeout game to a team that at home made only seven of 33 three-point attempts. Seven of 33. Skip this, shit. Skip, this series should be over. The Milwaukee Bucks should, Milwaukee Bucks should be kicking them own booties and uh, self in the butt. They had game five, Skip. They had a 16-point lead. This series should be over. Oh, you're looking we at should... it the other way, and I'm looking yes. at it this way. It should be over for the <laughs> Nets. So, Shannon, here's my bottom line on James Harden. I am baffled to the point of tormented about what's going on with his balky hamstring. You mm -hmm. have pulled hamstrings before. I pulled yes. a few in my day. And we both know that once it's pulled, you are done done. You, right. you cannot run through it. You can't tough through no. it. You can't right. pain threshold through the hamstring right. pull. It just shuts you down right. like nothing will. The, the largest muscle in the body, and, and when it goes, especially if it tears, you are shut down. Right. Okay, so what do we know about James Harden? Well, we know that he came back and played at a very high level, like a James Harden level, against Boston in the first round of the playoffs. An average, uh, well, let's just do the closeout game. He went 34, 10, and 10. So that's James mm -hmm. Harden. And right. then in the first few seconds of game one against Milwaukee, it went again. Right. And then once Kyrie went down with the, the bad ankle, then James sucked it up after a game and said, well, maybe, maybe I can try to go. Well, not only did he try in game five, but he played 46 minutes yes. on a quote-unquote pulled hamstring. Well, in, in my experience, your experience, you, you can either go or you can't go. So no. if you can go for 46 minutes and actually play a semblance of basketball, it's probably getting a lot better. And yes. if you can turn it around 48 hours later and play another 40, what was he, 40-some minutes last night, 40, yeah, he right 40, at 40. Minutes. If you can do that, then it would seem to be on the mend. To me, it has to be more in his head than in his hamstring. That, right. that he's afraid of, its, of it pulling again when it's saying to him, the signals it's sending ha have to be, we're okay down here. We're, we got it. We're, we're, right. we're back in business. And for whatever reason, he can't regain enough confidence to push off. He, he, right. he has no explosion whatsoever because he doesn't nope. try to have any explosion. Nope. So I've never seen anything like a guy playing on a hamstring, but playing I have to put quotes around because he's just <laughs> shuffling through. And right. if we could see the first big telltale sign last night came with 426 left in the first quarter when he stole the ball, if we could see this, and looked like he had a breakaway, looked like he could have a solo breakaway. Took it away from Giannis, and he's off to the right. No, he's not. He, he wouldn't even try. <laughs> no, he would uh -uh. not try to run. He just says, That's... no, I'm, I'm out. And yeah. he circles and goes backwards and, and lets everybody run past Catch him up. so he can just walk the ball up the floor and run a set play. And that's what those hamstrings do, Skip. You know it because, hey, you might want to step on it. And that fact said, nah, if I was you, I wouldn't do that. Okay, I don't I would. know if it's saying that or if he's just <laughs> thinking that because he doesn't trust it at all. No, well, no. I, I can't even believe. To me, it's an either or. Either you can play or you can't play. And once you right. get out there, as you know, coming off a hamstring pull, there'll be a moment when you get back out there and you say, you know what? I'm good. It's, right. it's okay now. I, I can go and you keep trying a little more and a little more and you say, I'm back. Well, yeah. well, he won't even try. He wouldn't try to go solo break. 
Right. And I don't know if, if it's in his head or if he's trying to protect it for the long haul because he knows that Kyrie's going to be out for a, a good while, maybe the rest yeah. of the, the postseason. I, I don't know what he's doing, but I, I'm going to give this up to you. We do have another five cases bet on game seven. Yes. Fox Bet says it's a pick 'em game, so it's even it, Steven. It's 50 yep. 50. And yet, if James Harden plays the way he does or, or did last night, I, I'm not sure I have a chance because I don't know if Kevin can do it solo. Right. I, I'm, I'm afraid he's hitting the wall physically. I don't think he can play 48 minutes and score 49 points. I, I'm just right. not sure. And obviously, I would hope that Joe Harris would snap out of it, that Jeff Green would turn back to good old Uncle Jeff and, and make seven of eight threes at home, and that maybe Blake could make three threes. But I just don't – if there's no James and you're going to play him high minutes, he becomes such a liability that Kevin has to try to win in spite of James. Right. I, I just don't know if they can do it because, obviously, Milwaukee is a really good basketball team. They are, Skip. But if you look at KD – KD took 30 shots in this game in less minutes, and he took 23 shots <laughs> in 48 ridiculous. minutes. Yeah. So what they're doing is like, we're going to make him work. Let's make him expend some energy. We know in order for them to have any chance, Kevin Durant has to be spectacular. So at least let's make him work. Let's make him work a little harder. Make him put up a little bit more, a, a, a few more shots. <clears throat> and if we can contest those. I thought, Gian, I thought Giannis did a great job uh, 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 of trying to defend him. And don't talk about if asked upon. No, nah, don't nobody ask you. Say, hey, I'm going to take this challenge. Now, hey, if he gets it going at any point in time in this game, bud, I'm going to slide to KD. And definitely in the last five minutes, if it's a nip and tuck ball game, I'm going to slide to KD. Don't let somebody have to ask, hey, man, what you going to take KD for? Yeah. Nah, bro, you, you're, the, you're a defensive player of the year. You're the MVP. Take that challenge. Take that responsibility. But, Skip, Unless the role players, unless Jeff Green can give you one of those game five moments, unless Blake Griffin, and we've seen it throughout the playoffs, have a 19 or 20-point ball game. If they can't give you one of those, I'm not so sure Kevin Durant can score enough in order to offset what we know the big two Brooke, uh, uh, the, uh, Bucks have with Giannis and Middleton, especially yeah. if Giannis says, you know what, the hell with y'all. I'm going to the rim, and y'all can't do anything about mm. it. Okay, so obviously I'm not trying to welch on our bet, but I will tell you right here, right now, I will admit it publicly that if I'd known yesterday what I now know about James Harden and his hamstring, huh. there's no way I would have bet you what I bet you yesterday. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. Should, yeah. I appreciate that. You, you admit it. You admit it. Skip. Good it. on you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.